limited. Speaker? Yes, Representative. I uh, rise against the motion. I have to tip my hat to the majority leader. He caught me napping. I wasn't prepared for this level of success. <laughs> it's, it's an uncommon feeling. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, I, I rise against the motion to recommit. We, we followed the rules. We pulled the bill to the floor. And we wanted to have a vigorous debate on the measure itself. And, uh, you know, it's my fault that uh, I wasn't quick on my feet to rise in support of it. So I take the blame for that, certainly, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, this uh, measure should be addressed because it, it uh, heals a wound that we've talked about. Uh, I don't think we should throw it back in the Judiciary Committee to let it die a death of benign neglect. Mr. Speaker, there have been other measures that have been addressed this session that are just as well, more controversial, in my view, that ended up dying in committee. But at least they were given a hearing. Here we have 2,500 emails from people who say, please, please, at least hear it. And we can't even give them the time of day. Yes, this stuff was brought up during the uh, as amendment in amendment forms during the uh, special session, but we. We, uh, we just bulldozed right through them, um, and there were quite a few of them. But now we have the chance to look at it slowly, deliberately, in a dispassionate view and say, okay, if we're going to talk about some of these other controversial things, which we did, that get these folks all riled up, but then we say, you're not even uh, worthy of the scraps from Longshank's table uh, and we're not even going to give you a hearing on these things. It doesn't make any sense to me, Mr. Speaker. So for that, uh, I uh, rise in opposition to it. And uh, please ask that uh, we at least have a full open debate on the measure. Thank you. Thank you very much for the discussion on this measure. Yes, uh, Representative uh, Jordan and then Tokoka. Yes, Mr. Speaker, in opposition to the please, recommitment uh, to judiciary. Yeah, proceed. In essence, by recommitting this measure to judiciary today, you're killing the bill. This bill happens to have a two referral, Judd slash Finn. Today is final decking on two referral bills. So in essence, we're telling our constituents out there, we're gonna kill the bill right now. Possibly it can be reintroduced next year and discussed. Well, again, as I stated to pull this measure to the floor, I received over 2,500 emails. No, I'm not the chair. I don't even sit on the committee. You know, I felt the compassion. I represent 1.4 million people, and we're not even gonna have some discussion on this bill on this floor. And we're gonna tuck it away as if it didn't exist. Oh, I've been told it can be referred, but we all know if the subject matter doesn't hear it, it's not going to get re-referred to a money committee. So who's kidding who? And really, I'm ashamed right now. Because I didn't think that's how legislators did our job. And this isn't a job for me, Mr. Speaker. This is a passion. I'm giving back to people who put their commitment in me not only for being an appointee in 2011, for being elected by my constituents. And I'm telling those individuals, it ain't worthy. May I please have permission to enter written comments into the journal, Mr. Sure. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Tokoka. Tokioka, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> no vote. Thank you. Thank Speaker. You. <coughs> Representative Choi. No vote, please. Sure ordered. Mr. Speaker, also a no vote from this side of sure the order. chamber. Mr. Speaker, uh, no vote with a brief comment. Sure ordered. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, um, this bill, this bill, I think is the essence of what we would believe would be a completely unbiased, a completely bipartisan effort to heal wounds in our community. We had my colleague over here, member of the minority, asking to pull the, to the floor a bill of a member of the majority party, Mr. Speaker, 
And then we saw a broad support for that measure. And the reason being, Mr. Speaker, the reason being is that there's kind of this lingering smell. You know, you know, Mr. Speaker, when there's like a dead body, you know, and you try and bury it, but then the smell kind of percolates to the top, Mr. Speaker. Now, what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to hide the smell as well. This means, well, maybe a, better, maybe a better analogy, Mr. Speaker, is that you're a boxer, I'm a boxer. When someone gets knocked down, we don't kick their teeth in. The referee intervenes, the individual is allowed to stand up, and if appropriate, they are given an eight count, given a little time to recover before the match continues. 2,500 people, 2,500 people, given what had just happened, still found the energy, still found the courage, still found the strength to contact a body that they believe has turned their back on them. Just to be heard, just to be heard. Just please give it a hearing. They didn't say pass it. They didn't say we want you to get by. They said just hear it. Just hear it, just one ear, just one ear, 1624, one ear. The effort to recommit, Mr. Speaker, is the saying you don't even have one ear in the People's House of Representatives, your voice will not be heard. 2,500, that's, that's, um, that's about half of the people that came out to testify um, during special session, Mr. Speaker. And the reason why there's only half is because those half have given up and gone home already. They don't believe that they're going to find a friendly voice in this building and that their chances of having their voices heard are gone. 2,500 still reached deep down and said, you know what, let's give it one more try. Here they are down, and we're going to say, not only are we not going to help you up, we're going to kick your teeth in while you're laying there in the mud. Why can't we give it a hearing? Why recommit? Because we want that smell, that lingering smell, to just, dis you know, why won't they just go away? Why, why do we have to continue to, to deal with that? Because that's our job. That's our job, Mr. Speaker. And I think, in fact, maybe we should write legislation that if we get over 2,500 requests from the people of this great state to hear any measure, that should be standard procedure. We know how difficult it is to get people to testify on a measure. We know how difficult it is to get 2,500 people to send in testimony. And 2,500 have. And we're saying we want to shut the door on them, say, uh, post a message on the door, said, uh, we're closed to you guys. You guys aren't welcome here. You guys won't get heard. And for those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I am very, very much opposed to recommitting this bill and not allowing to at least lend an ear to the concerns that were, that were said. And I believe it was said on this floor, Mr. Speaker, as was said earlier, that this, that this measure reflects some of the uh, amendments that were brought before here. And it was said that they would be considered to be heard during this legislative session, Mr. Speaker. Hmm. Could be wrong. Maybe I heard that in my head. Maybe that was my, my hopes getting a little too loud. Sometimes maybe we get a little too hopeful for 2,500 people's voices to be heard, Mr. Speaker, but for those very, very reasons, Mr. Speaker, I have to be opposed to recommittal. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Yes, Representative Fukumoto. Just a no vote, please, Mr. Speaker. So ordered, Representative. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Speaker? Yes, Representative Suji. No vote, please. So ordered. Thank you. Yes, Representative Ito. Uh, no vote, please. So ordered. For discussion, Representative Johansson. Thank you. Also, a no vote, please, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Representative Chief. I mean, much more. Right? It's so okay. Ordered. Same request, please. So ordered. Speaker. Representative Wong. No vote with a brief comment, if I may. 
Please proceed. Speaker, we're fixated on this one particular bill, which is being recommitted, but I look at this a little bit in a bigger perspective. If we look at the number of bills that the faith community had put forward, there's actually eight of them. This is only one of those. Now, if there had been other bills that would have been heard, this would not have been or be an issue as it is now. But there are bills that not only talked about religious freedom as 1624, but those that had established protection for religious, religious freedom re concerning public accommodations, marriage, etc. Those other bills that had uh, regarding sexuality, health education, uh, Bill 1794 regarding additional elements of existing health education, et cetera, et cetera. Speaker, there's eight of these of which all have struck out. I think what you're hearing is a plea that, hey, why don't you hear at least one of these and get on with the due process? Speaker, as representatives of the people, we are called to have justice and do mercy. I don't think this is being just, and I don't think it's being merciful by the way we are so one-sided in the way we hear bills and we don't hear bills. I don't think it would tear the Judiciary Committee apart if it did get a recommittal and actually had a hearing. That would be a great accomplishment. But Mr. Speaker, are we fearful of the people? Nobody was fearful of the people when we called in the special session, and we handled it. Uh, Kevin and the sergeant, they did a great job. So what are we afraid of, Mr. Speaker? This is a harmless effort. Just letting the people be heard. That is the simple part of it. There's no harm that's gonna be done. As I said earlier, this bill has been passed by Democrats, Republicans at the federal level. 17 states have already done what we're trying to do here in Hawaii, but we're stuck on it. 17 states have already done it. It's motherhood and apple pie. It's God in country. What's the controversial issue? It is the procedural proprietary issues which some of us in this chamber are unwilling to face. And Speaker, I think we need some leadership. I think we need to hear both sides of our community, not just one side, and we need to get on with healing, uniting, and going forward as a Hawaii, not as a divided community. And Mr. Speaker, that's what I fear in the long run, that our absence of giving attention to both sides of our community that we are creating. Thank you, Speaker. All right, thank you very much for the discussion. Mr. Yes, Speaker. Representative. In, su in support of the motion to recommit, uh, just repeat again that you know this is not a topic that has gone undis. I'll say it in the positive. We have dis discussed this topic on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight occasions within the last few months. Uh, these were not sort of passing uh, glances at the t at the subject. There were three floor amendments that we discussed uh, at length that have identical language to HB 1624, and they were, sound, except for the preamble, excuse me, uh, they were rejected by solid majorities. There were five other floor amendments during the uh, debate on SB 1 that had parts of HB 1624, also discussed at length. All five of them were rejected, and, you know, as a committee chair, is there, is there, a, is there any point in hearing a bill where you know your colleagues do not want this to approve the subject matter that's before you. Uh, you know, it happens sometimes in judiciary, it happens in other committees where you realize that the political lay of the land is such that there's no reason to hear the bill at all, and I think the vote today simply reinforces that fact. Thank you. Speaker. Right, thank you very much. Speaker. Special representative, the second time on yes, the proprietary sir. of the, uh, the motion. Yes, sir, just a brief rebuttal. Uh, those amendments were, God bless the author, were dead on arrival. We all knew that. We were uh, just exercising our prerogatives. What we're asking for here is a full, fair hearing on the measure. Most amendments are done to make a point. The point being made at that time was th the religious freedom was being infringed upon. Now we're coming back today and saying, let's have a full, fair hearing. There's other measures that were addressed this session that were just as controversial, if not more, and they got hearings. This one, where a substantial member of the body believes it should get a full, fair hearing. And if it doesn't pass out of the committee, well then so be it. But we want a committee not to do it here on the floor, because when we do it here on the floor, the odds are stacked against us. You're going against leadership, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very steep hill to climb without a Sherpa. 
So we want a hearing in the committee. That special session votes, I think those are relevant because we knew none of those were gonna pass. We knew it. Just like if I bring up a, 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 the, uh, an amendment to a bill next week for something, we know it's not gonna pass. It's being done to make a point. And I think as the, the good representative from LAE said, there were assurances, uh, at least uh, sideways assurances, that this may be addressed in the next session. We can come back and look at it. So for those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I am a firm no against the recommittal. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the discussion. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Representative Polly. In, in brief time. rebuttal, I can think of 2,500 reasons why we should hear the bill, Mr. Speaker. And if, for the, for the sake of those 2,500 people, if, if, if the bill's not going to pass, then let's let them know why. But there are very clearly 2,500 people who want the bill heard, and I believe it's a simple gesture of the People's House of Representatives to hear that bill to let them know that if, yes, if 2,500 of you come to the, to the, before this body and request that a, if you petition this body and ask that your voices be heard, we're not going to supersede and say, you know, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And we're gonna roll right over you and do what we want. Even if the gesture is, okay, we'll have the hearing, come on in, we'll explain to you why the bill isn't viable. But to turn away 2,500 people who have asked just for a hearing, a hearing, I think those are 2,500 very good reasons to hold that hearing, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. We're going to be, uh, going to be calling for the vote. Uh, Marcus Bashiro, you have yeah. the last one. Mr. Speaker, um, first of all, um, I'd like to have permission to submit written comments. Sure. And this is in opposition to, to the motion. Please uh, proceed. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I th thank you very much for this debate and discussion. I think it's important for the body to understand the context in which these matters are brought before us and the the policy reasons for this debate and discussion. You know, I think this is an, this is an important bill. I mean, everyone knows, uh, have some idea about it. Uh, it's all about protecting minority rights in our society. And that's the genesis of this bill and that's the import of it. Whether it's one's right of conscience as a minority uh, ethnically or culturally or even in religious, religious practice, I think it's important for, for me as a Democrat to stand up and defend those rights. So that's the genesis and that's the intention behind it, this measure. You know, the fact that it does not get a public hearing, it, it concerns me because I would, I would think that uh, we would see fit to allow a, a vigorous discussion and debate on something as fundamental as First Amendment rights, both the uh, prohibition about the establishment of any religion as well as the freedom to practice one's religion freely, as well as to enjoy the privileges of the First Amendment of the right to speech, free speech, right of press, and right of assembly. Because, Mr. Speaker, I, I, just, I just fear that if you accede uh, policies and procedures to the, the popular or majority rule at that point in time, uh, you may run afoul of losing these basic constitutional rights. Uh, what this measure would do is basically empower and put some kind of process in place when one feels that their sincerely held religious beliefs is being infringed upon by government. It doesn't mean that they'll win the day but it gives pause for us to examine whether or not those policies serve a compelling government state interest, which is public health and safety. And then it goes back to them to show that there is a substantial imposition upon their freedom. But it also has to be weighed against the interests of them. Has government enacted policies and procedures to effectuate and advance the public interests and in health and welfare in the most res least restrictive manner? the least restrictive manner. Under the current law of the land, and I think from the uh, reading of the testimony submitted by the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, they are taking the position that was announced in the um, employment case, the POD case, or the Smith case back in 1990, that basically overrode about 40 years of constitutional law regarding constituting the First Amendment rights and government regulation. So what our Congress did under President Clinton, under Senators Akaka and Inouye and Congress persons Mink and Abercrombie, 
and signed into law by President Clinton. I think I was opposed by two members. One Democrat, one Republican, introduced by and supported by Ted Kennedy, Senator Ted Kennedy, and Senator uh, Charles Schumer in New York, had strong support from the ACLU, the evangelical groups, the Jewish federations, all sorts of strange bill fellows of all stripes and colors across the entire political spectrum, all supported it because they were afraid of government telling them how to think and how to act and how to believe and what to believe upon something so fundamental as one's freedom of conscience. So that, that's why I think this is important. When I look through the record of the special session and I see the commentary coming in from the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission and the commissioners themselves, I have no doubt in my mind, Mr. Speaker, that they have discarded the uh, Schubert test, the Yoder test, and they have embraced fully the Smith test, which was a 5-4 decision led by then Chief Justice Rehnquist. And again, it was our Congress, our President Clinton, our own Senate leaders that overturned that decision by enacting the Federal Freedom of Re Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Mr. Speaker, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to speak here today and to um, voice my opinion and speak publicly in opposition. And I know you appreciate my sentiment, you appreciate my thoughts, and you appreciate the work, the, the work that I've done in this measure. And I just want to thank you publicly and with my colleagues here to the right and to the left. But again, Reluctantly, I have to go and uh, oppose this motion to recommit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, thank you. We're going to be calling for the vote. If any one of you want to register or no vote, would you signify a no? Speaker, that, uh, permission for written comments, please. Sure. Uh, same request, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Representative Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, please register a no vote, and may I please have permission to enter written comments into the journal. In addition, may I please have the words of the representatives from Wahiwa, Wainai, Kahuku, and Hawaii Kai entered into the journals if they were right. my own. Thank, Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, just also uh, written comments, Mr. Speaker. Sure. For the discussion, Representative Fukumoto. Same request for written comments. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we have it all. Let's call for the vote. All those in favor of the recommittal re signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Motion is passed. Bill has been recommitted to the Committee on Judiciary.